Hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here, and welcome back to another crypto video. Now, before we get started, let me quickly give you guys one, or actually two, very important warnings. First of all, I will never tell you to text a number. These things are fake, they are impersonating me, and the only ones that are real are the ones with a dark banner around it. As you can see here at the bottom, that is me. This is a scammer trying to steal your money. So you can spam all you want, text them and you know, do some funny stuff because it's not me. And there's definitely a lot of people who do think it's the way, so I'm just quickly putting that out there. Then the second thing which I think a lot of people must be wondering about are those live streams with five, seven, three thousand viewers that have Ripple in the title or the account name is Ripple. Those are all fake too. I can guarantee it to you for 99.9% .9 certain that every Ripple stream you'll find on YouTube is fake. If there's ever a real one, you'll definitely hear it from me in a video. So do not worry about it. They're all fake. They're all trying to steal your money as well. Having said that, if you are appreciating the content on this channel, make sure you press the freaking like button and subscribe for daily crypto updates. Now, high profile investors are now buying XRP according to asset management firm CoinShares. Now, hopefully in the video slash live stream of earlier today, depending on how you watched it, you've already kind of picked up here that I firmly believe the space is being manipulated right now. And I also firmly believe that XRP's utility isn't really coming out just quite yet. Together with that, that once XRP gets kind of out of this lawsuit, that a lot, a lot, a lot of institutions will be coming in. But this article and this little theory here just kind of confirm that. I mean, we have definitely seen a kind of lackluster year in terms of XRP here. I'm going to say last five months. Ever since Ripple got sued in terms of really heavy adoption, but then again, if I look back at all the quotes from the Brad Garlinghouse interview, which we kind of covered last couple of days, he did say they are expecting massive growth. They really are expecting their numbers to grow times 10 or times 100 in the next three to five years. And they're also expecting huge XRP related growth. Again, not talking about the price necessarily. If you have that in the back of your head, well, then what are we missing, right? And I think really that comes down to that the fact that Brad Gollinghouse slash Ripple cannot really give us their utility just quite yet. I, I don't think they can really give us that many updates. However, this is one thing that we did see. It is that basically the ETP, right? The, the product over on CoinShares. Let's quickly read it here. High net worth in investors are allocating additional funds for XRP. This is actually a really interesting concept on its own because I was, for example, a little bit earlier today doing my own little analysis on the options and whatnot. And there's two things that I noticed. One, this is really intricate. And the second one is I don't stand, understand it enough to actually explain it to you guys. <laughs> I've been spending about two hours just looking through all of this and looking up some of the definitions properly. But it will take me a couple of days before I can really explain every single thing that you're seeing right here. If you can, that's completely cool. But I'm not good enough with options to actually you know, enlighten anybody about it. I was just finding it interesting how much money is going around in the space in terms of options and how... There's quite a lot of these major companies, which you can also find on here, that are actually, you know, involved with it. And just some major amount of money, actually, that's all speculating on crypto like that. And again, I've already explained to you guys, Bitcoin and XRP, it's all one line. It is all one line. If Bitcoin goes down, XRP goes down. If Bitcoin goes up, XRP goes up. That is the way it's going. Now, once more, this kind of changes once we're in really a bullish run. Or when there's enough exchanges, like for example, the ETP, which XRP just got, uh, which we're going to talk about in this article, or some crazy stuff, which we just saw. I'll talk about that a little bit later. Stay tuned. Now, in its new digital asset fund flow report, digital asset manager CoinShares says that the crypto asset is now the top rising altcoin among its institutional investors. That is definitely something nice. CoinShare reports that $33 million has been invested in the fourth largest digital crypto over the past week, increasing the coin's year-to-date inflows to $38.9 million. The firm now manages $83 million in XRP assets. And that is actually pretty nice to see, guys. At least, in my opinion, it is. So, it's um, actually, Bitcoin saw the largest inflow of 108 followed by Ethereum with 65.2. Again, it's interesting to just kind of think about this for yourself, right? Just think about it. Like, hey, XP is actually still picking up the pace right here in terms of um, popularity with the 
institutional investors. However, why this is all become relevant? Where does it become relevant? Well, first of all, I would say because there's more coins coming, like for example, Stellar and Cardano, which are following XRP on this little trail, which once more shows kind of the severity of the case that crypto is really becoming more adopted by these institutional investors and by guys who really want to get it on some major stock exchanges, because that is basically what this is all about right here. But also, I firmly I'm going to restate that here, firmly believe that all coin season is along the way here. I must quickly admit, we don't know for certain if this little correction that we saw just now is over. We could have kind of two patterns like I explained in the live stream earlier. We could basically be at the lowest right now. We hit the lowest point. We're going to come up from here or we can actually dip significantly lower. And this is basically just kind of a, a first of many tests. But again, if we're going to look at the dominance for Bitcoin, we have hit a ridiculously low level below 50. That's the first time we hit that in a pretty damn good while here. Let's quickly check it out. The last time we hit that was, let's see here, below 50. Below 50. Throughout 2018 here somewhere, guys. Yeah, freaking August of 2018. Around that time is the last time we hit the same type of dominance for Bitcoin. But the first time, I guess, in a very long time was also at the start of 2017 when the big bull run, of course, was, was really there, as you guys most likely know. And a lot of people are expecting that the kind of same momentum is going to move on. And again, we have a lot to go down for all coin season to kind of spark up because you guys know this is going to most likely happen significantly later. But then there's also another thing. David Swartz, for example, put up here, the prices are too damn low. And this one, I think just really in a funny way, ties into the fact that Bitcoin uh, made a first dip at about four, again, my time, Dutch time, Amsterdam time, 4 a.m. GMT plus two or UTC plus two. 4 a.m., Bitcoin made a little bit of a dip. Most altcoins like XRP, Veach, and whatnot dipped right there too. They followed Bitcoin. Interestingly enough, though, the biggest dip for, XRP, uh, for Bitcoin was at 9 a.m. And all these altcoins actually started picking up the pace after 4 a.m. So at 5 a.m., all these altcoins were already going up. That does make you think about something. And for me, it really makes me mostly think about the fact that, yeah, you know, Bitcoin is now being sold off for altcoins, even now that the price is going down, the Bitcoin price, which you all can agree on, is manipulated. There's just, you might say it's a lot of market action. Well, a lot of it is manipulated. I really firmly believe in that. I really firmly, firmly believe in that. But that is interesting then, right? That a lot of money then at around that time flew into altcoins, basically outflowing to, to feed them. Let's quickly come back to a trading view chart here. I'm quickly try to show you guys what exactly I'm talking about here on a Bitcoin chart so you guys can see it. It's just really fascinating to me how that is moving along. So right here, you can see XRP made a dip at around 4 a.m., right? Bitcoin here made a first dip at around 4 a.m. And then afterwards, it decided to fall back down lower for the next couple of hours until it made its final dip at about between 9 and 10 a.m. Once more, my time. Now, again, let's actually put up a XRP to BTC pair here. I think that would be quite interesting. If you take a little bit of a look at that, the lowest here for XRP to BTC was also at around 4 a.m. when Bitcoin made its first little dip. After that, Bitcoin went down significantly further, but the XRP to BTC pair, for example, picked up the pace really, really heavily. And that is a very bullish indicator for all coins right now, because basically at that point, from that point on forward, people decided to sell off their Bitcoin for all coins and quite significantly so as well. The XRP to BTC pair right now is up 21% at maximum 29% here over on Binance. That is really something to think about here. Once more, the point of all of this is, guys, first of all, don't give up. Second of all, don't get caught in all these scams. And I guess third of all is you never really know exactly what's going on. But we do know the institutional adoption is increasing, not only for XRP, for a lot of altcoins right now. Once more, Stellar and Cardano are also right now coming to these major um, stock exchanges. Switzerland-based investment products provider 21 Shares is launching exchange-traded products, ATPs, for native crypto of Stellar and Cardano. It is all coming together. It is all coming together. It is all freaking coming together. Then uh, something else, I guess. Binance Smart Chain dusts Ethereum's daily transactions by 600%. Even though this doesn't completely tie into the previous story, it might make sense if you look at it from the perspective that the way it's going right now, Ethereum is really key, right? And I've told you guys before, the Binance Smart Chain, which is basically a... You have the Binance Chain and the Binance Smart Chain under the same BNB token, basically, or coin. Now, I've explained before, Binance Smart Chain is really quite good if you compare it to Ethereum in functionality, except for the centrality part. 
Binance Smart Chain is very centralized. They even admit that it's not a secret in comparison to Ethereum. For the rest, it is basically the same because they took Ethereum as a basis and copied that over the ERC-20, right? They copied it over mostly. Now, what does that mean? Well, that also means, guys, I really firmly believe here that there's still a lot of innovation to come here in the near future. And, well, Binance Smart Chain is taking over here. Which of these bigger coins, like, for example, Cardano, Polkadot, whatever, Binance coin, is going to really overtake Ethereum? And can it really be possible? And if you ask yourself that question, another one would be, if Ethereum is going to be taken over, does that mean that Ethereum cannot ever overtake Bitcoin? And if that's the case... Could another altcoin actually overtake Bitcoin? That's kind of a question that's really been popping around in my mind uh, quite a lot recently. Could an altcoin actually do that? And again, if we're talking capabilities, does XRP have the capability? Yes, it is ridiculously fast, ridiculously cheap to transfer. And if we're looking at this top list here, for example, which coin I'd you know most favorably switch over, I would definitely say XRP is the nicest to do. You might argue that BNB is cool too, but once more, guys, you have to think about what is really, in essence, a cryptocurrency. BNB, the whole Binance Smart Chain thing, is pretty stupid because it's literally centralized. They, they, they know that. It is. So from that perspective, I'm going to disregard BNB and Tether as real cryptos because they're kind of stupid. From this list here, XRP is definitely the best one. Even BNB, if you're going to compare it, then XRP is still cheaper and still faster to go for. So if you have that in the back of your head, well, is it impossible for XP to get there? Obviously. Is it possible for Ethereum to get there? Obviously. Is it possible for a more centralized system like BNB to get there? I'm going to say no, because people will never put enough trust where it can get there. On the contrary, though, it can get to the second place and really high up because once more, we're seeing it really beating Ethereum right now. And even though I personally would say Ethereum is better, uh, mostly because it's older and it's more classic and they are working on their Ethereum 2.0. Right now, Binance, um, Binance Smart Chain, or basically BNB here, is severely outperforming and does do it better than Ethereum is. Would I bet more on BNB than on Ethereum? Definitely not. Definitely not. But is it really a fundamentally good coin right now? In terms of projects, yes. In terms of the pancake swap ordeal, definitely, definitely so. And that, again, kind of answers the question on its own. All these coins could become number one. BNB could definitely, for example, beat Ethereum. Will it, though? That's a completely different question. And in the end, does it really matter? Well, no, we're seeing some huge outflows from Bitcoin into some other alts. But then again, it's not like they're really doing good, huh? They're, it's not like they're really doing good on the USD pair. It's just versus Bitcoin they were doing quite well. And in the end, I just think this might be the start of some bigger movement. Martin Falk also shared this little post with me right here of Flair. We know of a particularly exciting NFT project coming to Flair May 8th, which I really thought about as well. Like, would I go for NFTs if they were an XRP ledger, for example? I might, right? The only reason I decided to not go for any cool dusty BC NFTs was because I thought, you know what? If we're going to do it on Ethereum, it's going to be freaking $60, $70 to buy one. And the price wouldn't be high because I would do it for fun, right? So it'd be, let's say that the price of the thing was would be $10, $20, whatever. You have to pay $60 to actually purchase that. It'd be kind of dumb. And to open the store is also costly for what I was going to give away, for example, what I was going to sell. So I was like, yeah, no. Nah. If it were to be on XRP, for example, though, or something like that, that would be pretty damn cool. I'm not exactly sure what type of project they have. I haven't really read into it, but it's interesting to kind of think about. And then this article here was, uh, why is the crypto market down? The answer will shock you. The answer definitely did not shock us because we've talked about this for a little while. I don't know why they made a title like that. That's, that's pretty dumb. The answer will not shock anybody because this is like the most talked about subject right now for the last couple of hours already for the last day. However, yes, I still believe it is the Biden tax plan. But then again, some theories I've been seeing out there are that this was known all along. That this whole tax plan was coming along, was known. They insider traded it and basically decided to dump the price up front so we can have a bigger dump right now. Some say for the big friends to buy in. Some say it's just to cause panic in these markets. Some say it's to ruin these markets that the government has, for example, tried to do that. I am not quite sure. What I do know, though, is that this bill will, will it likely be passed. Well, if I read it from what you guys are saying, then no. But then again... Some others have said, well, he really has a lot of friends. And if he does this, he does it to get it through. So in the end, guys, I cannot put my own verdict here because I just do not know. I just think a real big rule like this is kind of inevitable. The rule specifically for 40%-ish capital gains tax is definitely inevitable. However, some heavy regulations, which are a short-term kind of hurdle, are inevitable. And like I've explained in one of the earlier videos with the Charles Hoskinson example, he basically said, we're going to get some regulations. We're going to get some, which are definitely not nice. We'll lobby to get them fixed or we'll lobby to get them better. And I do think that that's definitely going to be the case. However, we cannot um, assume that they're not going to come. 
Will they stop innovation in the United States? Yes. Does the United States, you know, should they thrive for that? Strive to that? No. But will they try it? Most likely. Be prepared for that. That is what people are preparing right now for as well. And exactly how low we're going to go here, I do not know. But I've been trading crypto like mad. We've been taking quite a lot of opportunities to just buy and sell, basically go long or go short here. I want to do some of that stuff in live streams, but again, I have I keep on considering. Because you guys ask me on Patreon as well, Dusty, give us your signals, give us your whatever you're doing. But I keep reminding people, with Bybit, for example, or with this type of trading, it is so simple to lose money that I don't think it's a very smart thing to do. Because if I make losses, for example, let's say I make three losses in a row. I know, okay, I have a big record here. It's going to be fine, right? I'm not going to sweat it too much. And I have proper risk management. That basically means if I, for example, were to have $1,000, I would most likely do trades with, for example, 1% of my total capital. That means, for example, trading with $10 every single time. But there might be some guys watching who are like, you know what, Dusty says let's do this, so he's going to put in all his money on trade number one. Or maybe he's like, you know what, I'll go 30% on every trade, I'll put almost all my money in and make some money here. You see what I'm trying to say here where I'm going to have to explain it so properly that it's their own risk where I'm too afraid that people will lose their money because you do lose in leverage trading here and there. It's not a proven science and you cannot win every single time. It's impossible. Hopefully you win more of the time or your wins are a lot bigger than your losses and it's an even thing, for example. But you will definitely lose every here and there and that should be in your calculation. But that is why I don't share it because I think the majority of the people watching are not disciplined enough to take those things and will lose severely. And I just don't want to see that. You know, I, I personally don't think that's the right thing to do. But then again, I might share it over on Patreon because I'm hoping those guys are capable enough to you know, understand, I guess, the bigger picture. I'm seeing a little bit of a trend line here forming on XRP as well. huh? Interesting how that is moving along. Maybe it's all, maybe it is all over, guys. It's, it's, it's really indeterminate right now. I, yeah, I said a couple of things in Patreon. I'm still going to update on that soon, though, because buying the dip here was definitely an interesting move. Was it scary? Definitely so, but RSI and everything was kind of looking like it was the dip of the dip. Then again, going so quickly upwards against Bitcoin, it is interesting to me. It is really fascinating to me how this saw moving along. Let's see if I missed anything. I don't believe so, right? I don't believe so. All right, so I've done my, my story a little here. Once more, a little summary is cryptos are picking themselves back up. We got a rejection on Bitcoin actually on the hourly chart here back on one of the earlier uh, supports or resistances. Let's quickly check it out. Ooh, okay, so this is one of the resistances, yes, which we faced a couple of times here throughout this. You can see how many times we touched that or were around that area here, the, the real um, pinkish marker. It's also the dip I guess we caught back there. And that's basically, uh, we can actually take it a little bit lower than this. Let's actually see where exactly it should be, right around there. You can see we really got rejected over that area again. That's basically the dip which we saw a couple of days ago with the big sell-off, with some huge whales over on Binance and also the huge liquidations on all platforms, where a lot of money was taken out of the, uh, the long side. The bulls were basically exhausted back then. We already kind of warned that we could make a lower low right here. However, as I explained in the live stream just now, there's two scenarios, and we're going to see, guys, we might just bounce from here and go even lower. It's, it's not excluded right now. It is not excluded. We might break through here. Everything is open right now, and I'm not saying, guys, that all this is going to be bullish from here. I really, really cannot say for certain. Let's watch it. Let's be a little bit careful right now with exactly what we do. And I would personally think, man, as long as you're holding, I'm going to keep reminding people of that, as long as you're holding quality coins, it ain't a big deal. It ain't a problem. Holding very, very, very comfortably. I at least am, right? I'm holding very comfortably. Uh, but once more, guys... In the end, I'm a hodler. We'll hold two to the bitter end, but I'm also a trader, and I like to kind of take my opportunities whenever I can. So I definitely try to put some positions in here and there uh, to make some extra profit because it's once more freaking coin margin. So I make the coins whenever I win a trade. So if I'm trading with XRP to USD, I make XRP for trading that. And that's what I like because I want more coins. If I'm doing the USD, it just doesn't feel the same. I don't like it as much, but again, that's just a personal type of preference. Having said that, guys, there's also a $1,610 bonus if you deposit and stuff like that using my Bybit link. Uh, check it out down below. And uh, that was it for this update for today. Make sure you press the like button and subscribe. See you guys again in another crypto update.